All right, cool. We got it. Uh, I got it dialed in this time. You have to make sure you start on Facebook Live the the right way. Are you on mic? Yeah. It's it's gonna come on. All right, cool. Type in if you could hear me and if I'm straight this time. What's up, Keith? What did I say? Twice is a uh, twice is it is a charm. I got it dialed in this time. When you do Facebook Live, you you have to start it. If it's uh, if it's quirky, it only gets uh, quirkier. What's up, Art? What's up, Keith? Good morning, Neil. What's happening? So I'm gonna throw down some value today from the beach. I'm down here, of course. There's my beautiful goddess of a wife right there, who kicks my ass at finding sea glass. She's always she already found a monster piece, but I, I did find a dinosaur. Well, not really a dinosaur. It's a horseshoe crab, but it looks like a dinosaur. So I did save its life and throw it in. But these seagulls are eating good today. Look, these these things are eating. I don't know what the hell they got going on down there. What's up, Steve? So do me a favor, tag somebody in this real quick. Tag a friend, tag a business owner, tag your mom. Someone tag my mom. <laughs> tag as many people as you can. There's gonna be a lot of business value, but you know, with business there's life, and with life there's business. And I'll throw down a lot of value of both. Both, I had a lot going through my mind this morning. A lot of thinking. And then I tied it together with one piece, uh, one piece of messaging, which I'm gonna call the trifecta today, which really it's the trifecta and then there's a piece in the center. So do me a favor, uh, get some more people on here. I'd love to have a hundred plus on this. You know, I don't know who else is uh, gonna throw down information. But you know, one of my warriors sent me a message today. What's up, Gabe? And he sent me a private message. Well, a couple, a couple warriors sent me some private messages today. One of them said, which I thought was cool, he said, you know, he's coming to the SBE next week, which is gonna be kick-ass next week's SBE. If anybody on here is coming, uh, post the big boom. It's gonna be our best one yet. We got Jay Abraham coming out again. We got Mike Michalowicz coming out. Again, we have my copywriter, Aaron, the ninja himself coming out to talk on stage. And we have Lindsay, who has been with me for over four years, building CEO Warrior. She is coming out. She's gonna hit the stage. And Steven from WIT, previously uh, Sequest, is gonna hit the stage with these guys too. And we're gonna talk about how did Mike do it once again. What's up, Lynn? What's up, Mandy? Do me a favor, everybody hit somebody, uh, hit somebody up to join this real quick so I could get the message out to as many people as possible. So that's gonna be really cool. So someone said to me the other day, they let Mike, how in the hell, uh, everybody, my mom's on there, hey mom, love you. Everybody say, hey mom, and tell her you love her too. Let's give mom lots of love this morning. Mom, I'm down the beach. You should come down today. It's a little chilly, but it's really beautiful, and there's lots of sea glass, and there's the beautiful sunset. So, you know, he he's coming back next week, and when he came, I met him. He was telling me, you know, I met you at the wet show when you were speaking, and a lot of his language, and it doesn't matter who it is. If you're at SBE, you'll meet him next week. They're doing, it's a father and son. They're doing magnificent, uh, magnificent stuff. And when he met me, he was like 50 something years old and he was saying, you know, like he was almost cashing out, like he's on his way out. And I was like, I don't know. However I said it, I probably said like, that's bullshit. You know, like 50 something years old. Like I'm 48. I'll be 50 in a couple years and I'll be stronger than when I was 30. I mean, I just went with uh, my son and uh, my business partner and best friend for a really, really long time, Rob. And also his brother, Ernie, who I know for geez, probably almost 30 years, and we went away to Hank's NLB uh, tactical gun training. And I mean, I was dialed in. I was sore in the last day, but I mean, I was dialed in at 48. I mean, I was running and gunning, you know? So uh, he sent me the message, and I could just see now, now he's like, man, it's not that life was ending. Life is just beginning. 
And isn't that the first message? Like, how are you living? Somewhere, I remember one of my students told me, he said in a dojo, he's getting really old. I'm like, he was 28 or something. I'm like, you're 28. If you're feeling old at 28, there's a big ass problem because I tell people, you know, at, at, at 50, at 70, you're just getting, you're just warmed up now. And I think it's funny how, you know, one person sees themselves in the grave and another one sees themselves getting stronger than ever. You see the picture, right? It's like this real old shriveled up lady. And then there's this other uh, woman, she's just ripped. And it, they're both 70, right? And it, I think it says something like, you know, there's always a choice or something like that. So I think that's the first thing that's really cool that someone shared with me this morning. The other thing that another one of my warriors shared, a Centurion warrior, he said, you know, he was talking about just all these coaches today. And I said, yeah, there's a ton. Like anybody who's done a million dollars is a thinks they're a coach today. But what they don't understand is there's a difference between doing things for money and understanding the moral obligation and responsibility you have. This is this is not about make a quick buck because you help somebody. You you can destroy somebody's life and somebody's business. What's up, Michelle? You I mean, you could completely destroy somebody's life by coaching them wrong, giving them the wrong thing. Like I saw something on Facebook where people were talking about, yeah, you know, in your company, you could do a private hidden Facebook page for your employees. And I'm like, okay, that sounds really good. And and I probably should frame this a little bit with, it's not a one size fits all. And the fact it works for one doesn't mean it's right for other. And a lot of people that are doing maybe, you know, 1 million, 5 million, 10 million, they, they don't understand, they don't understand risk yet. So when people share these things like, yeah, you should have a private Facebook group for your employees. I'm like, okay, well, first off, do you understand that everything that's written in there, Facebook owns? Do you do you understand that first? What's up, Joe? What's up, everybody who who joined? Uh, Frankie, what's happening? Good morning, and Christine. Good morning. Do you know that what you post in there, everybody owns? The second thing is, what about risk? I mean, so when you lose an employee, what does everybody say now? So what's everybody saying on that public platform right now about the lost employee? Are they saying things like, oh, he didn't deserve it, or he didn't, uh, he didn't work hard enough, or, or he's a schlep and a scumbag? Well, guess what? Well, that's all documented forever. So when that guy goes to, you know, when he goes to uh, unemployment, or he goes to, you know, the state and says, this guy, he fired me wrongfully, they just say, he says, yeah, and there's a private Facebook group and I'm sure all that's in there. Now you're gonna hand over all your documentation. They're gonna, they're gonna scroll through it. And then now your creative idea just cost you a million dollars. And first off, until you've paid out a million dollars in a consequence of a lawsuit, we've paid out, it was over, uh, the lawsuit finalized that a million that it cost me and my partner. I thought it was gonna knock us right out of the game. Uh, imagine one day you're cranking along and the next day you owe a million dollars. I mean, tell me, type in there, how would you how would you guys feel about that? And then to find out that in the end, the million dollars, the person said, well, look, I know that it's not your fault. Uh, we knew this person, but I had to get paid from somebody, so it might as well be us. Like, you know, so until you understand major risk, I mean, we got hit from a drippy condensate line cost us uh, over, I think it was over 175 or a couple hundred thousand on a drippy condensate line, not because of the problem of the drip. It was the problem of we had a permit on one part of the job and then they added on the job and we didn't have a permit on the second part, not, not on purpose. We had a whole permit department to slip through. That hit us with treble damages, which was a multiple of one, two, a multiple of three. So like you have to understand anything, same thing when I teach you stuff, um, you always get the disclaimer, right? You have to do your own due diligence, you have to use your own thinking, but I would tell you as a business owner who's done over $200 million in 10 years, uh, I would tell you this, and that's not even counting how many companies that we work with and we coach and we take responsibility of you know making sure they understand that they they have to look at both sides risk versus reward and this risk ship it will knock you down if you don't pay attention now you don't want risk to uh to paralyze you right like you don't want risk 
to sit there and keep you afraid to walk across the street because there's a risk a car could hit you. No, you want to make a calculated risk. You want to look both ways. This isn't even what I want to talk about, but it came up. And, uh, and you want to pay attention and ask yourself, like, what could go wrong? And if you look out far enough into the future and say, well, could this happen? I mean, look at it as something as simple as this. What's up, Aaron? Good morning. Who else is on here? I have to take my glasses off. Sorry. Isaac, what's up? Tim White, what's up, brother? David, what's going on? Joe, what's happening? Everybody type in what's going on good on Sunday. So let's look at this. And, and this is not a risk thing, but it's something you have to think about. So if you go back, man, it's at least 10 years, nine years, I've created a program that was called Over the Top. And it was a training program that I would run my employees through on how to, I did all the training myself, I built it myself, on how to go and run the whole play. From dispatch giving the job to you know the customer service rep booking it, all the way down to the service expert going out in the field and what he does, what he says, and, and a framework. Because as most of you know, and if anybody's attended any of our trainings, either road warrior, phone warrior, leadership, uh, war planning, teen, warrior, warrior relationship, SBE, if any of you have attended any of the trainings, you know that I'm not a believer in scripts. I'm a believer in frame, uh, in frameworks. Because scripts create robots, frameworks create magic and create uh, humans, right? It, it creates uh, humans. And so if you attended any of those, uh, type in and say, do you believe it or, there's a little fish? Oh. Are you just telling me or you want me to save something? Okay, good job. My wife's approving of the, uh, the starfish uh, story. She, didn't, she can't save them all, but she just saved uh, that one. Is this making sense? Tell me what you're hearing so far. So, but back to the original thing is like, yeah, I get it. Everybody wants to play a bigger part in the world. You know, everybody wants to help somebody and coach somebody. I always say this, like make sure you got the success and make sure you got the scars to share. And then make sure if you're going to be a coach in this world, you take on the ethical responsibility to know that you're, you're, you're playing with somebody's life. You're, you're playing with their life. You coach them wrong, they're fucked. You give them wrong insight, next thing you know, you have a guy who can't pay his bills, he's, he's broke off his ass, his wife hates him, his kids hate him, and he's lonely. And, and next thing you know, he's, he's depressed as shit because you said... You know, I don't make anything sound like it's that easy. Uh, or maybe I do, but that's not my intentions. I don't believe things are that easy. I believe things take honest effort and work and focus. And you gotta, you have to grind it out. I mean, you have to grind that shit out. You have to be relentless. And in between, and I get lost, everybody. I mean, I get lost. My wife reminds me, sometimes my kids remind me in, in certain ways, they don't come right out and say it, but I mean, I'm human too. I mean, sometimes I'm building shit and I could just get lost, lost in the, lost on the patio, lost, uh, lost air building stuff. I mean, I have a whole bunch of stuff I have to, <clears throat> I have to get done um, for SBE. So I, I'll probably intentionally have to get lost a little bit, but you don't want to be lost forever, right? You want to make sure that there is a sense of, and I hate using the word balance because I think it's, you know, I, I think there's always like one side is, is leading or lagging and it makes you feel, you know, inferior or incompetent or, or sad or whatever. Um, I think it's just the sense of understanding, you know, understanding what you want, uh, what you need and, and paying attention to all of those those pieces of it all right let's get to the other training the trifecta because i wanted to make sure and and i've learned something i learned that it just takes one good idea that is executed on to create a lot of uh a lot of magic and so i don't forget if anybody does know anybody who wants to come to service business edge next week we do have a couple spots left. Just uh, hit me up in a private message. I'll get you all teed up. Or if you know any business owners that are looking to go to the next level, hit me up with that, uh, that too. All right, let me show you what I mapped out here. I'm gonna flip the, uh, I'm gonna flip the screen around here. Okay, cool. So now you're gonna get my feet 
and my shell diagram here. All right, everybody got my shell uh, diagram and I found, I didn't save this from last time, I found this lucky uh, feather. So there's three big pieces to growing a business today. What's up, Aaron? And these three big pieces are going to help you understand a focus point, but a key thing to change the game. Justin, sweatshirt, it must be 45 degrees out. It actually is around, it's around 50 degrees and windy. I know you guys are not used to, uh, used to me wearing something like that, right? But actually I have to roll up the sleeves because now that you said that I'm, I'm feeling warmer from the, the sun and stuff that's going on. All right, so let me draw this out for you with my little shells uh, diagram here. So first, as you guys know, right here, you have marketing. And um, Dan Kennedy, Dan Kennedy uh, set me up for the kill a long time ago, probably over 10 years ago. If any of you don't know Dan Kennedy, he is, I mean, he's the godfather of marketing, right? He's just a legend. And he turned around and asked everybody, you know, what business are you in? And everybody's like in the business of service and delivering value and producing products and all this shit. And he goes, nah, he goes, you, you all got it wrong. You're in the business of one thing, uh, marketing. And you know, the thing about marketing is a lot of people don't understand it. So they get confused. They think it's a direct mail or a pay-per-click. And I think, um, you know, it's, it's that whole like, I'm allowed to be ignorant and so I could be frustrated because I'm ignorant. And I think, no, if you're frustrated about something, you should understand it. Do I know how to place ads on Google for pay-per-click? No, I don't. Do I understand uh, Do I understand Google's algorithms and, and tracking and reporting and, and concepts behind how they look at things and, and how they want to know what's relevant? And yes, I understand that. I have the understanding of these things. Do I understand that direct mail to a cold list just trying to sell them something is completely wrong. Do I understand that headlines and subheadlines and education-based uh, marketing and creating consumption marketing is important? Yeah, I understand that. Let me show you the birds out there. I feel like I should go get my son's fishing pole and some bait and just cast that out there. I mean, they must be catching something. I'm surprised fishermen are not, they're down here but I'm surprised they're not right there because clearly them things are eating little fish and when there's little fish, there's big fish, which is good. This is the big, this is the big fish. Marketing is the big fish and you have to understand the difference between, uh, you know, uh, psychology of marketing versus persuasion marketing versus momentum marketing, stackable marketing, timing marketing there's a lot of aspects to this and this is not something that I've ever learned you learn in a day it's it's like uh, martial arts you, you don't do it for one year and you're done it's like you either love it or you don't and if you're love marketing then you consider yourself a marketer so I consider myself uh, a master marketer otherwise I would not be able to hang around and, and hang in the circles of guys like Dan Kennedy or Jay Abraham or Joe Polish or Dean Jackson all these brilliance brilliant, brilliant marketers. They consider themselves definitely marketers first. So this is the first of the trifecta. So let's go to number two, which is really, really important. And so you should ask yourself, well, what do I do with that now, Mike? What do I do with that? And if we, let's just clear, I know you like that fancy skill, the back of the, the back of the dirty feather technique here. Okay, so let's just talk about, now you know that, and you're like, ah, I'm even more fucked up than when I got on the call, right? So I'm like, okay, so what do you do with this now? Well, first you, well, I always tell people, master someone at a level that you could understand. You know, there's a lot of these guys uh, that are really master marketers. Like, I mean, Grant Cardone, right? He's, he's a master marketer and salesperson. You could tell by the way he sells stuff. But he's at such a high level. So he's got his here, right? He's got his, uh, that's his uh, jet. He's flying. So you can't, you relate to the dream, but you can't relate to the lessons because he's at a higher level and you're trying to figure it out. So I always say, find someone who's in this circumference here, okay, where they're teaching, but they're willing to teach 
and you're willing to understand and grow because this is this is a constant growth that you want right there. You wanna grow every day. My intentions for doing this video today besides showing you the seagulls, um, not showing you my beautiful wife, for me to see my beautiful wife and the boats and the birds is to help you grow because I know, just like I said, my wife's like that starfish story. She can't save all those little fishies, but she just saved that one. So I don't know if I could save all of you, but I just saved, um, I just saved some of you to learn and understand, okay, I got it, Mike. I connected the dot, marketing's important. And this is the biggest frustration. Like people come to me and they're like, well, what should I do? Do I do pay-per-click and direct mail? I'm doing SEO and should I do voice shot? And, and should I do newspaper and should I do radio and I should do TV? And then they go to these associations and shit and people are like, yeah, you know, they run into something. They're like, I'm doing TV, you should do TV. And I'm like, no dumbass. The fact that you're doing TV uh, maybe it's the right market, maybe you're the right size, maybe it's the right price, maybe you have select certain channels that convert. No, it's different for everybody. I mean, when you look at the marketing side of things, it's gonna be this budget, right? It's gonna be this budget. I mean, anybody, and now it's changed the game a little bit with pay-per-click. I mean, years ago, I taught guys like, you know, Mitch Kenny and, and certain guys like this, like they were able to just do pay-per-click and double, triple, and four times the size of their company. but you know, all your eggs in one basket will be a dangerous thing. And that's not understanding marketing because you could put money in one vehicle and get leads. It's like saying, oh, I have one cost per lead program, I'm gonna stay there. You know, if you believe in all these experts and stuff, like they they say like Facebook might blow up in five years and not even be around and, and Uber's gonna completely change and who knows what happens with Amazon or Google or who figures it out or who joins together. So you wanna make sure it's a diversified, so I would say for all of you, the first homework, and, and let me clear this and give you something else on marketing. Uh, type in a big old boom or something if you'd like a little more understanding of marketing. Otherwise, I'll move on to trifecta number two. So I'm gonna wait for a big old, uh, you gotta give me a big old boom if you want more. If you want more of marketing, if not, then I'm gonna move on to trifecta uh, number two. Jeff, uh, Bill Wilson, what's up? but he's in shorts. <laughs> yes, I am in shorts today. I didn't even know uh, I want some shells. Aaron, are you coming out next week? If you're coming out next week, I'm sure my wife will bring some uh, shells. It's a shell company. Sheila, what's up? And what's happening? Okay, I, I'm scrolling down. I didn't realize. Steve Burke, what's up, brother? Mike, Jerry Street, what's happening? Guys are kicking ass down there, the boss boss brothers down there. Jared, what's up? Deb, what's happening? Deb, type in. How excited are you for uh, the next couple days and how scared are you? Deb's getting an on-site from CEO Warrior. We're extremely excited about that. Robin, what's up? Steve, holy crap. Okay, we got a lot of booms. Laura, what's going on? Jim, what's happening? Mr. Bruno, what's the word? Eric. Jeff Newman, how you doing, brother? All right, so let's get back. Let me clear, let me clear my board here. You love this? So many people are trying to get so fancy with all their fancy shit. And I got the fancy iPad shit too. I love drawing on the fancy iPad, but I'm not gonna bring the fancy iPad down to the sand right now. So we're gonna bring it here. All right, so action step number one for you. In your market, in your place of the world, I want you to make a list, okay? I want you to make a list. And I want you to make a list of all the possible marketing vehicles. And why don't we serve each other today? You guys cool with that? Let's blow it up. Let's blow the stream up right now. And I want all of you to post, uh, to, to type in, um, to type in the, the, as many different marketing vehicles there are. All right, let's serve each other really fast and, and real powerful, okay? So let's, because if you don't know the list of what to consider, then you're just being sold what others have. Let, let me say that again. If you don't have a list of what to consider, you're just being sold what other people have. So they're just trying to sell you their products. And I always tell everybody that's ever, let me turn this around for a minute. Actually here, and I'm just not like in the abyss, like talking from the sky. You know, you're so busy being attacked by salespeople and all this stuff and and the first thing I would say is, look, if you, if you wanna sell me something, then don't even come meet me. I'm gonna be the wrong person. We're not gonna spend a lot of time together. Keep going, guys, I see it. 
Let's put some paper lead in there. I see Google. Let's talk about things about strategic uh, Amazon strategies, right? Magazine, newspaper. Keep it. Come on. Keep it going, everybody. Let's create some momentum here. So well, I, I forgot the other point I was saying because I got so excited of all of you typing. Mike Matheny, what's happening? But step one, you got to make a list. Step two, you look at my man, Adam. He just comes in with a, with a power play. Boom, brother. He just comes in. He's like, there, there we go. Now, the cool thing is about a list, everybody, is this list is not for you to say you should or should not do it. It's a list of evaluations. Let me turn this back around. You looked at me long enough. So if we were able to put an A here, it's a list of items to evaluate. Oh, I remember what I was saying. I was telling about salespeople who come in and want to sell me stuff. And the first thing I say is like, look, if you have a great product, and I believe you probably do or you wouldn't reach out, if you're looking to come and sell me something, then I'm going to be the wrong person. I could refer you to a bunch of people. But if you're looking to come and have a conversation with me and show me things I don't know show and, and teach me something, then I'm willing to spend time with you. But I'm going to let you know that there's a five-minute window. In five minutes, the, the window of opportunity is we'll move forward or we'll stop. And I want to – let me flip this back around. I, I, Guys, a uh, quick story, and then give me a big old boom uh, if this is a lot of value for you. So give me a double boom if it's a lot of value. Or I don't know, can you put the, the, the muscle arm or the fist? So I'm very, I, I control my time very well. So I make sure that, let me put my glasses on. I make sure, because I look cooler when I say this part with my glasses on. Uh, no, the sun was coming on me. You want to make sure, Jen, here's someone driving on the thing. We gotta find out about this because I'm so gonna drive on here uh, too. I don't know if they're allowed to or not. Uh, so if you look at all these vehicles, right? I definitely have the squirrel scenario today. I mean, I got a sailboat sailing out here and I got this guy driving. I have, see, I have a lot of shit to just look at today, everybody. I got a lot of stuff to, to look at today. I, I forgot what I was saying, so someone's got to type in so I know you're listening and, and help me re remember. All right, let's get back to evaluation. Let's get back to evaluation. So you make the list, uh, you evaluate it. Oh, the salespeople I was talking about. Thanks for the backup, everybody. You got to back me up here, right? The, the salespeople, you have to be clear on them in the time. So my wife and I, we have, we have a kitchen kitchen people coming over and they're going to look at the kitchen. So me and my wife are sitting at the table. We're sitting with the kitchen guy and this guy's just a sales cheese dick. Do you know what a cheese dick is? And this is, you guys know if you're on this, like don't keep, if you're an oversensitive person or, or you have small children around, you probably shouldn't listen or you should make sure you hold their ears because I don't want to change the way, the things I want to say because I'm worried about I'm going to hurt someone's uh, feelings or something. So this guy's a cheese dick and he's sitting there and, and he... He is just doing the typical flipping through the slides stuff and going through it. And, and I don't know, maybe it's 10 minutes and that's it. My wife gets up, she walks out of the room. So he doesn't know, but I know what's happening right now. So I tell the guy like, um, we're, we're done. He's like, what do you mean we're done? We still got to go through like, I don't know, I'm making this. He didn't say this, but he still had 75 fucking slides to go through. And I'm like, yeah, but she just left. And he's like, oh, she coming back? I'm like, no, she's not coming back. See, you delivered completely wrong. You were here trying to sell things. You weren't delivering exactly. You didn't say, what do you need from me today? What do you need right now? And how can I serve you? Like, what are you getting done? You wanted to go through your PowerPoint slides. And that was it. She checked out. She's done. He's like, uh, can we get her back? I'm like, no, brother. Nice meeting you. Time to leave. Pack your shit up and go. And he's never come back since because he was never invited back because he wasn't delivering the right thing. And, and some of you would be like, oh, that's crude. Well, I don't know. Do you want to stay in jail for, for an hour if you don't have to go to jail? Like that wouldn't make any, any sense at all, right? It wouldn't make any sense at all to, uh, to, to do that. All right, let's get back. So we're going to get back to I've been selling a lot more multi-year memberships. Thank you. You helped me move the needle. Awesome. I'm sure you're kicking ass to take a names. Sponsor opportunities. Awesome. Kelly, Sheldon, what's up? Let's turn this back around. All right. So marketing, we want to first, uh, step one, you guys all want to make a list of every single marketing vehicle that you have. Number two, you want to evaluate. Number three, you want to pick companies that are a fit for you, but you only want to pick an ROI and you only want to do it on a test. 
Um, do not sa sign any long contracts with anybody. That will not make any sense. You want to do it on a testing basis. So if I have a list and I give it a couple weeks to reach out to, I think that's why a lot of warriors love us. And a lot of you that are warriors, give a big old warrior hell yeah boom or something or t tell me what it's like to be a warrior. Like we have already vetted the vendors. I've been in, in, in organizations. Well, I mean, I've been in Nexstar, I've been in Service Roundtable. Um, I wasn't in airtime, but I know a lot of people there. I was in PHCC very, very long time ago, ACA very, very long time ago. And, and the problem is they all have amazing stuff that they do. But the vendor programs is they'll let anybody that will cut, uh, uh, give them a kickback in the group. And I won't do that. Like we've had a vendor in there. He wasn't fit and wasn't serving. Warriors came and said something to us. I'm like, boom, you're out of the program. Like you got to earn the right to stay in the program. Like if people don't like you, I don't need you in there because one person pays you and and we get a check of some kind. Like that's ridiculous. We boot them out. So you want to have this testing period and you want to know the ROI. Now, what makes it easier, if it's okay, you guys got number one, take a snapshot or something. You got number one? All right, let's erase number one. This is our, our fancy eraser here. And what you want to do is uh, once you have this list done and you have the ROI expected on this, the cost, right? The cost versus the reward to expect, which I'm going to tell you one of the biggest things today is people spending money on marketing. And the number one thing that I say when they say I don't have enough leads is I always go to the phone or the email conversion and then I go to the dispatch, then I go to the people. Um, people got this all wrong, and so I gotta erase this again. Here's what happens today. So here is the guy who offers the service, right? Here is the dispatcher, right? This is the dispatcher who sends the person to the job, and then here is uh, and this could be multiple things. This could be what we call phone warriors. Um, they're badasses, so we know they're they're great because they've been trained. But this also can be online, right? This could be online chat or anything like that in this segment here. Now, most people, when they say they're doing bad, they go right here. They go right here to, to the expert in the field. A lot of you guys call them service techs, which I find is completely ridiculous. And, and it's ridiculous because uh, you're pissed off that um, you're, you're pissed off that you're not getting business, right? You're calling them a technician and technicians are to fix shit and, and uh, experts are to con consult and do you know consultations and stuff. So a lot of people go right here when they're marketing or they don't have enough leads and stuff. That's completely wrong. You want to go, uh-oh, we got a little rotating, rotating flip going on. You want to go here first, you know what I mean? You want to go over here, like what's happening on the front of the line, not the results of the back of the line. This is probably a huge lesson for a lot of you. What's up, Greg? You must fix, you must fix the front of the line to get to the back of the line. And then all of this is only as good as this right here, marketing, okay? All of it is only as good as as the marketing that's gonna happen uh, happen there. All right, so now let's talk about, once you got the marketing deal, this is how I was able to do 200 million in, in 10 years, is because I dialed in on the marketing side of things. What's up, JR? What's up, Greg? What's up, Anthony? What's up, Mr. Eric Corbett, you badass? What's up, all right? Smooth and pack sand with your writing comes out better and more clear. <laughs> okay, all right, cool. All right, so let's let's uh, clear out and let's do a little uh, readjustment here. All right, we'll do a little readjustment. Okay, so first step, we're gonna do, uh, you guys know, we have marketing, we touched on that. Number two, we have sales, right? So up here, we have sales, we have marketing, we have to do this really, really good. What's up, Anna, what's up, Cliff? We must do this marketing really, really well, and then we could get to selling. And most people have this extremely confused because 
um, they're trying to sell versus uh, serve. Okay, and you have to come at it from a serving perspective first. If you have the very best solution for somebody, well then the marketing is gonna work really, really easy. It's gonna work really, really uh, good. There goes the seagulls, look. Truck on the board, seagulls on the move. He's on the move. You can put shells here. Oh, Aaron, you gonna mail them to her or something? Unless she come, tell her to come to SBE to get it. Okay, he's he's chasing the birds. Okay, so back to uh, sales here. So one, just like marketing, um, let's talk about some fundamental pieces over here. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's marketing or if it's sales, you gotta have, first off, an understanding. An understanding. Okay. I just wanna have a quick sidebar conversation. Did you guys think it's as weird as I just fucking thought it was that this dude came and stuck his fishing poles right in front of me, right here, like was that, was that fucking weird or what? Like right there, he was like right there. Now he's relocated because either um, he came here to check out, that's why he's alone, and he didn't like my education, but either way, I'm glad that he moved over there. So we're, we're good now. All right, let's get back on the, on the lessons here. So one, first, um, here you have to have this whole understanding thing, right? And, and number two, you, so you have to understand what marketing is, you have to understand what sales is. Today, this, most industries are so damn uh, plagued with trying to think they, you know, they think selling because the industry is, is so jacked up. Um, the industry is so jacked up with people just like sell them and close them and, you know, use this fancy shit. It's so, it's so crazy. And anybody who's on here that's been to Road Warrior, Phone Warrior, knows that's not what we teach. We don't teach people how to manipulate, take advantage, and, and throw fairy dust in their eyes to get them to buy stuff. You don't have to do that. If you're amazing, step one, people buy amazing. That's just, and, and if you're amazing, they spend more money for amazing. I mean, that's, that's the result of it. I mean, CEO Warrior is nowhere near close to being like one of these cheap ass organizations by design because you you know what do you have you know uh if you have a uh, it's very hard to have price and quality in the same thing that's why when i hear a lot of these people doing their coaching and different things they're doing i'm like okay well clearly the guy doesn't value his own information or it sucks because he's not going to take anyone anywhere where they want to go so you have to have this you have to have this understanding of of things the the next thing after understanding you got to have a process everybody you have to have a process if you don't have a process for uh, we'll call it sales i call it serving or you don't have a process for marketing how to do it when to do it why to do it where to do it you know what it means when it's done how to look at the results of it like if you don't have that you have to learn this this is why when when you when you are out there when you're out there in the world today and you're doing your thing, I and it's the first thing, and a lot of you tell me if this is true or not true, the first thing I do when I'm teaching uh, CSRs to become phone warriors or technicians to become you know, road warriors or uh, warrior owners or managers or directors to become warrior leaders is I say, look, I'm not going to teach you fucking baby food. I'm not going to give you baby food. All these people out there that are giving you like, step one, have a notepad. Like, come on. You teach baby food, you're gonna be a baby forever. Do any of you wanna be a baby? Maybe put like the cry symbol in there or something. Like you don't wanna be a baby. Like you want me to teach you at a high level and even if you're confused, I've stretched you into confusion, which then I can layer in better better learning. I want you to learn, right? So all these guys, I, I watch these videos on Facebook of what's happening at different events, I'm like, holy shit, that shit's from 1920 and it's baby food. Who can, re if you can relate to this, 
give me like a warrior unstoppable or something because it's crazy i i watch it and my 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 neck turns my eyes roll in the back of my head and i'm like man this shit is so damn old not that some of it doesn't work it just doesn't work at the level that you need it uh that you need it today what is that a picture of babe my wife put like what is that a girl okay all right, so let's get back to this. So do we understand we gotta have this marketing? We understand we have to have the sales serving. And and if you look at it, uh, let's give our, let's go into our sales action oh, items. Oh, what'd you think I was using? I'll take that one too. I, I wasn't looking. I'll put that one there and I'll take this as a fatter one. <laughs> okay, we'll go over, <laughs> we'll go here. Action item number one for sales. First change your concept into serving because it's just ridiculous that you feel you have to go out there and convince anybody of anything. The greatest salespeople in the world do not convince anybody of anything. They have step number two, be amazing. Like be amazing. I think this is a real issue in the world today. People, your writing is not clear because the sand is loose. Oh, Adam, take a pill. Brother, where's my sandal? Hang on a minute. All right, Adam doesn't want to miss out on this, so I've had to upgrade now because the thought of me not doing it fucking amazing, he's gonna have me thinking about this video all night fucking long. All right, Adam, good? Tell me good, brother. All right, watch this shit, okay? Right here, number one for the action item. Adam, you better give me a big old fucking boom or something, brother. Okay, all right, serving. You won't lose the shoes. This <laughs> That's funny, that's funny. All right, Adam's right. We do not wanna do anything half-assed. When you're doing training like this, where most people don't even fucking understand it, let alone wanna teach it, let alone don't wanna serve you unless they give you a fucking dollar, then I agree with you, we'll do it good. So next step two, you must be amazing. You must be amazing. And, and I think the world has to become more amazing. You have to become more amazing. You gotta start doing it a lot better. All right, this is for Adam. Okay, thank you, Adam. All right, and then number three, so first you gotta serve. Number two, you must be amazing. And, and number three, you must be. Now I love um, Tim Grover, I loved meeting him and I loved spending time with him at our event. You must be relentless. You must be relentless. What's up, John? You have to be relentless in, in, in wanting to improve, be better, increase results. You have to want to be relentless. And if you follow these three things, well, then you're gonna move the needle. And I would say if there's a number four, it's course correct. A lot of people today are not course correcting fast enough. So, where'd I forget the L in? See, okay, Adam, I'm gonna post the Hulk picture in a minute. One thing that I always tell people that come to my events is never correct my fucking spelling, ever. Because, you know, just don't do that shit, brother. All right, look, Adam, that's it, brother. You got X'd out now. You got X'd. No, no correcting the spelling. All right. So you got a course. You got a course correct because a lot of people go go in a failing route and they keep saying it. Like, can I tell you how many people? Let me tell you how many people I know that are repeating the same fucking life again. They become successful. They get fat and and, and complacent. They get broke off their ass. They have really money problems. They hit rock bottom. They then build back up, get successful, come back down, hit fucking rock bottom. And it's a cycle. Why is the cycle? Because, yeah, because they, they're completely, they, they haven't broke the course correction. They haven't looked at the, the chain. They haven't looked at the chain of what's been causing all of that. All right, let's get to number, number three. All right. Let's get to number three here. Um, so we're gonna clean our, our board off here. This is, guys, this is why a lot of people come 
to the service business edge and shit because I don't teach I don't teach baby food. I don't teach baby food. All right, we're gonna clean up. We're gonna clean up the whole thing real quick here. So look at the ocean a minute. Look at the ocean. And since you're gonna be probably sharing this with some badass people, do me a favor, share with people who are struggling because there's no need for that shit. I don't need anything from them. I just, well I do. I need them to become more successful to serve their families uh, better. So if you guys can just hand this video to someone, that'll be really, really helpful. All right. Here you go, everybody. Here you go. All right, boom, let's get it Let's get it going on here. So marketing, you know you have to understand marketing. Sales, you get, you gotta understand sales. And then the biggest piece, it's, it's so interesting. Um, one of the uh, Centurion Warriors of mine, OP, very successful. Matter of fact, if you're in restoration or you're thinking about going into restoration, which is really, if you do plumbing, uh, you should be doing restoration or if you do HVAC. We did restoration. We started it in 10 months. We did a uh, million dollars It was really really awesome. I stopped doing it because I didn't know how to deal with insurance companies um, OP is an expert on how to deal with this. So if anybody wants a connection to OP on how to bring aboard restoration and How to do it right? He has a program that he can help you out with that and help you bring in an extra revenue stream, which makes sense because most of the time you're going on a busted pipe, there's water damage. Why should you give it away if you could capitalize on it? And it is an extremely profitable business, okay? So we have marketing with sales, but when I was talking to OP the other day, he says, man, when I came to the Warrior Leader, it changed the game, okay? It changed the game. So what is the part? It's right here. This is where, this is where if you don't have this, all your knowledge, and all your wisdom is useless. Leadership. If you do not have leadership, your language is why the fisherman left. Okay, well, fuck him, right? Um, he missed out on world-class training. All right, so we have marketing. We have to have that. You're in the business of marketing. We have sales, which is called serving. And now we gotta put it all together. We have to lead, we have to lead our people. And you have to lead your marketing, lead your sales, lead your community, lead your family. I mean, this is, I think if there's, if you gave me a choice to get rid of everything that I ever could teach people, show people, help people, I would say, um, and let's say I could only keep three things, it would be these three, but if I could only keep one, this is the one that you must keep. Because if you work on your leadership, I mean, you know how many people are afraid to like, I'm afraid to confront somebody. Well, why don't you just remove the word confront and make it conversation? Why has it gotta be confrontation? Why can't it just be conversation? The only difference between conversation and confrontation is the emotion that you attach to it. And like some people don't even do this. Like I read an article before, it's like, who do you need to fire today? And at first your answer is probably no one. But when you think about it, um, firing doesn't mean remove. What, what about if firing just means I need to fire someone's behavior? What about you have someone coming in the office every day and they're miserable and you can't stand looking at them and you talk about them all the time? Well, maybe you don't have to fire them, but maybe you have to fire their behavior. So you gotta have leadership, right? I'm gonna give you some action items uh, for leadership here. And, and type in so far, what is, your, what is your action item you're gonna do? What's your big uh, nugget? that you're gonna do today while you're watching this. So type it in real quick. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into some leadership uh, action items. So let's see what you guys uh, got first. Yeah, thank you, Adam. Yeah, I mean, isn't that the fact? Like you don't have to fire the person, just fire the behavior. And once we fire the behavior, then the person has a choice, they can then remove the behavior or then they can fire themselves. I mean, isn't that the simplistic side of things? And, and so many people avoid that. Clean up my marketing, awesome. Not correct, not correct Mike Smelling and Sam. That's right, brother, never never correct. Uh, it's funny, I got an English award. I got a gold pen for English and Votech, but everybody else was on acid and cocaine and everything else. And I wasn't on drugs, so it was pretty easy. They had to give the pen to someone.
What's that, babe? It's ridiculous. All right, so let's give uh, action items for leadership. Number one, evaluate. Evaluate yourself. I take my chance. Yeah, evaluate your yourself. You have to evaluate where where are you at now as a leader. Are you a a leader? Are you a person who's leading by force? Are you a person that's leading by understanding? It's easy to get mad at everyone. I mean, Rob and I had this, um, how'd you do? Okay. Let me see. What's the best piece? Huh? That's a badass piece of sea glass right there. That's a really good piece. Here, any, any major colors or no? Green's good. She found red yesterday. All right, so let's talk about evaluation here. So Rob used to always tell me, because I used to say, he used to say, this is uh, this person sucks, this person's a problem, da da da. And I say, Rob, look, uh, the problem is us. And he used to always get so mad, even though he knew it was true, he'd get so mad. He's like, why is it always gotta be our problem? And I'm like, well, we're the fucking owners. So the results we have are the results we deserve. You might wanna think about that one, everyone. The results we have is the results we deserve. Isn't that the truth? I mean, what got you to where you're at will not get you to where you want to go. I mean, all the time I get on the I get on the phone or my team gets on the phone with someone about Service Business Edge and they're like, oh, I can't come now or I don't have the money. I'm like, brother, you're going to pay for it one way or another. You're going to pay for it and get results or you're going to pay for something and stay where you're at. And if you're cool with that, it's fine. But otherwise, you'll probably be purged out because the purge, we're getting ready to go through another round of purging, man. People are getting smarter and smarter. I'm working on, uh, what am I working on? I just finished up one, two, three different logos for Warriors. And we're working on two or three truck wrap designs. And these things, when they hit a market, it's like a, a UFO landed. You know, my fingerprints, CEO Warriors fingerprints are on more fucking amazing brands than anybody I know out there. And we just help guide them through our program. Most people want to do a great logo, great truck wrap. You know, they're 15... 15 grand in, 10 grand in, and it's part of what we do, just guiding them uh, on that, right? So one, as a leader, you want to evaluate uh, where you're at. Number two, ask yourself, so let's say you're $1 million, uh, what are the $5 million, the $5 million skill sets that you have to take on? You must always adapt the skill sets Always adapt the skill sets way out in the future for you to get there. If you think you have the skill sets to grow a, a $30 million company, you'd already be $30 million. You don't. You don't have the skill sets. You'd, you'd be there already. That's okay. It's not, to, it's not to worry about. It's to go on a mission. And that's why I'm glad that you're here watching this because my hopes are for you that this is I'm part of your mission to help you get there. So, so you must... Evaluate where you're at. Evaluate where you want to go. What are my $5 million skill sets or $10 million skill sets or $20 million skill set? Now, if, if you're working for a company or you own a company that's $5 million, don't go for $100 million skill sets. It's too, it's too far away. It's way too far away. Go, go $5 million up. Every $5 million is I've learned is different systems, different processes, different mindset, different people. Uh, different frameworks. Every when you hit every five million, there is another set of understanding. Your avatar changes every five million. Your employees change every five million, and a lot of them will grow through. I mean, Joe Tadaro, who's been was with me for like fourteen years, like he's running uh, after we sold gold medal. He's running gold medal and a whole bunch of other stuff. Why? Because because he kept adapting and evolving to all these skill sets. Every five million, he kept evolving, just like all of the people with me because I always said like, look, don't make it a day where we evolved but you didn't. And and that's probably an important one to write down everyone, everybody because if the company evolves and the people don't, well then people are gonna fall off. They're gonna have to fall off or fall away one one or the other. Does, does that make sense? I mean, that's what's gonna have to happen to them and you don't want that to happen. So one, you gotta evaluate. Number two, you have to go for skill sets uh, that are further out. And number three, number three here, you have to make sure 
that everyone is growing around you. And this was a big uh, mistake that I made. And then we're gonna tie a ribbon around everybody and be done with this training today. Uh, this is a mistake I, I made. I kept going away to all of these trainings and things, but I was not bringing my team with me. I was not bringing my team enough. So if, if you keep going to, and I see it all the time, like people are going to things that they shouldn't go to. We talked about that before. But if they're going to things and evolving, but their people are not with them, evolving with them, when they come back, how do you implement to a non-evolving team? I don't, how do you even do that? I don't know how to implement to, to a non-evolving team because then I have to evolve them to implement it. You see the vicious trap? That's why at Service Business Edge, we did this time, we had a bunch of promotions, but the one promotion was buy one, get one because I knew that one of the biggest problems is people evolving alone and not having someone else that's evolving with them so that you create a new baseline so you keep shrinking down to the behaviors and habits that are happening because they haven't evolved. That's why, that's really what put us on the track of if you wanna know, like why did we create phone, well first we created Teen Warrior. That was the first one, right babe, Teen Warrior? What? That we created for Warrior? Mm -hmm. Teen Warrior because a lot of people were having problems with their teens and they, and they were dealing with issues. And I'm like, well if they're dealing with issues and they can't solve it, someone has to come in, help build something to solve it. So we did that. Then I was like, shit, people keep saying that <clears throat> their, you know, their wife or their husband doesn't understand the growing of the company and da da da, all this stuff. So we're like, ah, fuck, let's do a warrior relationship training, which was help because it combined the relationship to be aligned in a forward uh, direction. So I mean, all of these things we built were all about growing. If we had a relationship training and only the husband or only the wife came, type in, how would that work out? How would that work out if we had a relationship training where only the wife or only the husband came. I mean, it, 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 it wouldn't work out at all. That's why when we did the last teen event that my son runs, and if any of you are looking and you're in New Jersey, my son has some openings for martial arts students, private instruction or small group instruction, uh, let me know, hit me with a private message. Or if you're coming to Jersey and you want some exclusive private lessons or something on either combat, gun, knife fighting, stick fighting, uh, Muay Thai, Jiu Jitsu, anything, let me know on that. He's, he's badass and I could set you up with him. So if you kind of think of these things is, well, you have to get everybody to grow with you. That's, that's the biggest thing. Like the last teen event my son did, we had day one with teens, day two with teens and parents because we'd send the teen back, but the parent didn't know the evolution of the teen. So the parent would reset back to their behaviors. Do you see how important um, this is to understand this? It's just like Road Warrior. Like people, and, and our intentions were not to teach everybody's employees how to do the process. That, that uh, it, it wasn't for all employees to come to us, but we, we found out that when they come and they're in the total immersion and they go back, that things will just, will just grow lightning, lightning fast. I mean, uh, the more people, I mean, Josh Meckham, you know, it, there's a guy who went from no job to pretty damn successful and growing a company really fast. And I mean, the list goes, goes on and on for a lot of these warriors that are on here. And the point is you have to understand evolution. You have to understand, which is why our, our next, uh, warrior training for warrior only in December. And if anybody's thinking about uh, joining a board at a level of warrior. We have three levels, so we have a level for everybody. You could come to that evolution because the whole point is if you don't evolve as a person, well, how the hell are you ever gonna grow and become more successful? Like, it's a constant evolution. And I see it because a lot of families, they're like, well, this is what my mom taught me. This is what my grandparents taught me. So this is, this is my evolution. This is where I'm at. And I'm like, man. You have no choice. There's iPhones today. You know we're going to be flying in space. Like you, you have to evolve if you hate it or not, or you got to go live in a bubble in the woods. So, all right. Well, that's my training for today, everybody. I hope you appreciate the training from the beach. If when you're done, um, if you could share this with somebody or uh, go out there and tell the world, CEO Warriors changing the world. That's our goal. We're going to change it one person at a time or many people at a time like this, then I'd love for you to do that. Uh, we are unstoppable and we're gonna keep doing what we do and what we're the best in the world at. Uh, type below real quick, what was your biggest nugget today? 
what's your big action item and then I want you to enjoy the rest of your uh, Sunday um, why to show way to show up oh thanks Bruno appreciate that that's just what we do brother uh, that's what we do uh, probably which is the last nugget I mean when you know like it's so funny uh, a lot of people they want to sell their companies and stuff Bruno a lot of these people they're out there and there's a difference between selling because you're just like it's time to evolve to something new and selling because you hate it right and I always tell people like <clears throat> I, I'm not what everybody else says if you hate it you should leave it and go do something else uh, if you hate it then you should figure out why you hate it and fix it right isn't that a little different of a uh, play at it like if you hate it why don't you fix why you hate it because you went in it because you loved it at one time and you're gonna be a lot more successful loving something than than hating something and I see people hating it oh I forgot one piece of the the trifecta and no one asked about it. It was the little seashell in the middle. Who wants to know about the seashell in the middle? Type in if you want to know. Didn't you see it down there? Let me show you. You see the seashell in the middle? Who wants to know what this is? That's the seashell. Have a, have a conversation instead of a confrontation. Absolutely, remove the emotion. Okay, Dwayne says yes. All right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove all these shells. I'm gonna put them over there because, not this one, this one's broke. We're gonna throw that one. Look, seagulls went like it was a loaf of bread or something. This one's broke too. Okay, so let's clean this up and we're gonna leave only the middle one. Only the middle one's gonna stay here. Look, I had to look like, I should've brought a drink of water. I ended up with like a Miyagi voice on. Only the middle one. Here, we're gonna clean this out real quick. What happened? Not yet. Not a tsunami coming. Okay. There we go. There's the shell. All right. Now, this shell, it sits. And we talked about this a little bit. It sits below the ocean. This is your belief system. And your belief system is holding you back from the trifecta of marketing, marketing, sales, and leadership is this seashell here. Your belief system of what you think is true or not true. And I just want to share with all of you, let's put that there while we talk about belief system. And you guys know, I don't want to go into it this time because I think I did training last time. Underneath the ocean is your subconscious mind. You know that. Everything you've been programmed to believe. And above it is your conscious mind. Everything you think now. And so... What's up, Neil? I always say this. And any of you that just joined on, uh, everybody who's been on here, is this a worthy training to watch? Did somebody go back and watch the from the beginning? Type in if you think they should. This way they'll know if it's true. And if not, then, then don't. The belief system is going to change the game for you more than anything. And it could happen super fast. It could happen super slow. But what you want to do is question. And I always ask myself this one question. One time I went to a Nexstar event. And they brought, and I'm, th I'm sure they had really great intentions about it. They brought a woman, how to market to women. And the whole concept of this whole thing, this is probably, man, it's got to be nine, ten years ago. I mean, this was a long time ago. And the whole thing was Wanda, Wanda. Wanda makes all the decisions. The woman makes all the decisions, right? And I sat there and I listened to this woman who wrote this book, Marketing to Women. And I asked myself one question. And I asked myself, Jeff, one question. What if what this person is saying is not true? What if it's not true? And, and the only way I should move forward with something is if I know it's true. So I went on a mission and I said, well, let me figure out, Tom, if this is true or not. What, let me figure out. So I start tracking every call. And I'm not telling you to do this. I'm a little nutty. I wanted to know on every call, was it male or female or call? Because they were saying Wanda's the number one. Wanda's calling. Wanda's making the decision. I'm like, this. what if this is not true? I must prove this for myself. Because the only way I could do something... And that's why I'd like to think, and, and a lot of you guys, Tom and, 
and Michelle and people that are in my world, you know that the one thing I'm really clear about is don't take my idea and go ask me how I came up with the idea. How did how did you decide on this? How did you get here? What made you think this way? What beliefs got you here? Because you want to know the understanding. Otherwise, implementing something that someone says without understanding how to get there or why you even got there, you don't understand, you don't understand the deep a deep part of it. So I go and I start tracking who's calling, male or female. Then I start tracking when the male calls and the female's home, what's the conversion? When the females calls and the female home what the conversion is and I find out that there is very little lines between male and female in New Jersey very little lines just like all these people one-leggers what an old fucking belief oh we don't run any one-leg jobs because we don't convert as good I'm like uh, yeah of course you don't you suck like you don't understand what I know of course I mean you come to my house and tell me I can't come to your house uh, your wife's not home. I'm like, okay, looks like we're not going to do business. Like, I don't need my wife there to make a decision. You know what I mean? It's it's ridiculous that whole thing. What if it's not true? If you go back to that, why'd you look at me for that? <laughs> I should let me rewind that. If my wife's home, I don't need to be there for her to make a decision. Is that better? What were you laughing at anyway? She's just laughing. Okay. So if you think about this, and I go and I find out that 52% are calling us, 51, 52% are, are women, and, and uh, 48% are men, a couple percent, you gotta understand, we didn't say, hey, by the way, is this a man or a woman on here? We don't say that stuff. And so we found out it was a 50-50 calling us. We did find out that the conversion over time, when the female called, but then the husband was home, conversion was higher. When the female called and the female was home, conversion was a little bit lower. But when I say a little lower, you're talking about a point. So that changed the conversation at the house slightly. But the point was, all the marketing was the biggest part. If you look at trifecta of the first part is marketing, they were trying to market everything to Wanda. Everybody that heard that message started putting out the message to the woman, which was turning away all the men. Isn't that true? I mean, it was turning away. So you lost it. It's just like these people, they put a big dog on the side of their truck. Well, a cat person's never going to call them. You know, so they really confused everybody. So I would say the last part I want you to take away from this training is ask yourself. Ask it for me too. If I taught you something today, say, is that true? Ask me, how did you come up with that? What did you, what got you that belief system? Now, a lot of my belief systems, I mean, it's it's because I spent you know, whatever. Now it's it's well over 1.4 million on my education and I did 200 million in my own company. So the point is I learned every stupid thing not to do so you don't have to do it. But that doesn't mean you just want to listen. You want to ask a really good question. How do you get a better answer? You ask a deeper, better question. All right, everybody, I'm done for now. I'm going to show you a picture of the ocean and then we're going to bounce. Wish you guys an amazing day. Share this training with some some people. Boom. All right, I'm out.